Welcome to this small group study focus on the Holy Spirit. We are going to ask the question, who is he and what does he do? Often we imagine the story of the Holy Spirit begins on the day of Pentecost. About 50 days after the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes on the early disciples and they are empowered to share the gospel of good news at Jerusalem. For some people, they imagine that the Holy Spirit is just a dynamic force or a power from God. It is an it rather than a he, a thing rather than a person. This is certainly the case with the Jehovah Witnesses who consider Jesus to be a created being and to be an action of God rather than a person in his own right. There's nothing new about what they say because uh, this is the view of the Arians uh, and the ancient church rejected their teaching at a, a worldwide gathering of churches back in the year 325 AD. Pentecost was not the first appearance in human history of the Holy Spirit. We find that the Spirit appears several times in the Old Testament, including pre-human times. In Genesis chapter 1, we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And if we had to describe the Holy Spirit's character, we could well use the term the creative spirit. For the spirit is not just there at the moment of creation, whether we call it the, the Big Bang or anything else, the spirit is involved in the creation of people. So in Genesis chapter 2 we read, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. The word for spirit, both in the Old Testament Hebrew and the New Testament Greek, is the same word as wind or breath. So it is the spirit who is breathed into people to give them life. And at the end of life we are told the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to God who gave it. When Jesus was talking about being born again, he describes the work of the Holy Spirit as a wind. Uh, Jesus answered, verily, verily, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has always existed with the ones we call the Father and the Son. And yet, although they serve a, a common, they share a common purpose or aims, each one is a person in their own right and are not just different expressions of the same singular person. The Holy Spirit is every bit as individual as the Father and the Son are also distinct persons. At the baptism of Jesus we see how all three are involved in distinctive ways. Jesus in the, is in the water, he comes out of the water, the Spirit uh, rests, on his, uh, rests on him in the form of a dove, and then the Father's voice is heard from heaven. Now in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit inspired creativity in others. The wisdom of Joseph was recognized as coming from the Spirit of God. And in the Apocrypha, 
between the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is equated with wisdom. Leadership was inspired by the Holy Spirit from Moses through the judges, kings, prophets. Leadership is not merely human, but is empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit. The great message of Jesus is that the presence and creative power of the Holy Spirit is available for all believers. The Holy Spirit is given to all those who accept the Lordship of Christ and are willing followers and servants of Jesus. The promise of God through Joel is for us and for our generation when we submit ourselves and our plans to God even on my servants both men and women i will pour out my spirit in those days the promise of ezekiel is ours too i will put my spirit in you and you will live new life in christ is given through the holy spirit by the one who says i am making everything new and the creative drive of God the Holy Spirit not only makes a difference to us, but empowers us to make a difference to the world around us. Even today, when we make decisions as a church, it is imperative that we listen, first of all, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So that we can say with the very first apostles, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. In other parts of the book of Acts, we are told it is possible to grieve the Holy Spirit. It is possible to lie to the Holy Spirit. So we need to be honest to God and put the Holy Spirit first if we are to make a creative difference to the world that's all around us. So where do we see the Holy Spirit working creatively around us today.